Let's play Domino Battle. Hi everyone, welcome back to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a maths activity that I created for a year two class that I've been working with this week. I really wanted to engage in really good quality uh, communicating, reasoning and questioning around some of the dot talks that we've had been having and extending that into our maths focus for a few days, which was around patterns and algebra. So we were looking at uh, increasing patterns, growing patterns, identifying patterns and I really wanted to get the kids to be able to communicate how they see patterns in their head. So I put together a bit of a presentation which I'll share with you and I'll share the resources to go with it as well to have a bit of a dot talk around what numbers can look like in those patterns when we go beyond six. Now we know roll a dice we all know what one to six looks like. If we look at most dominoes we know what one to six looks like. I have this awesome set of dominoes though that goes beyond six right up to 12. So you could have a domino that has 12 and 12 on both sides, you, uh, nine and 11, five and 10, those sorts of things. So those patterns look a bit different. They're not easily recognizable if they haven't been using them. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough for the whole class though. This is a personal set. So what I did was I took photos of these dominoes and then I laid them out in patterns uh, sorry, I, I laid them out in patterns and then took the photos to create some differentiated uh, games, which is Domino Battle. And this is kind of like a guess who or battleship version of this game where the kids will have the exact same board. So I've got game one to six. So one being the easiest and six being the hardest. And the kids will put something in between them pick one that is their domino for the game, and then they have to question each other to try and determine which domino it is. So this really gets out um, specific stuff where we can look at uh, patterns, make those connections, but really get to communicating and reasoning. So they need to ask very specific questions instead of just saying, is yours two and five? Is yours three and five? Is yours four and five? Because we know that's monotonous, it's not good quality questioning, and it really means that they're not making those links either. So in a second, I'll get to the laptop and show you what these resources are. Again, I'll share a Google link with you in the description box below so you can have access to all of these, laminate them as you want, and I'll also give you the slideshow that I used to start this off with the kids. So we started off with a dot talk so that we could try recognizing beyond six. So I will flip to that now and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is the slideshow that I showed the children. This was after we went through the learning intentions and success criteria uh, for this and the expectation that you need to talk and to share. And then we looked at, just moving forward in the slide, which doesn't want to go when I'm recording the screen. So let's try this way. Okay, so we just showed uh, how do we see patterns in our mind? How do we recognize them as a value or a numeral? And we talked around, you know, this is two, this is quite easy. And what do we see here? We see four, we see five. How do we know? And then we talked about the different ways people see it. The fact that some people might see the three first and then the two, or someone might see the three at the bottom and then the two. We don't always have to look top to bottom, left to right. When it comes to patterns, we see what we see. And the idea being that the kids needed to share this with each other and really describe what was in their mind. How do they visualize this? So moving forward, we continued and we looked at, hey, that's two, hey, that's four, hey, that's six. We recognize this. It look, could look like three and three. It could look like the two, two and two that came up first. What happens if I chuck an extra dot in there? They automatically knew it was seven. How did you know it was seven? Because we know six and one is seven. But we might see these differently. What if it's at the top? Does it make a difference? What if it's at the bottom? Make a difference? Yada, yada, yada. You keep going with your class in these conversations. Add another one. How do you know how much that is? Or well, hang on a second. You knew that six and one was seven. One more is eight. Hang on a second. Six, six and two is eight. What happens with one more? Hang on a second. We suddenly recognize this is nine. I know what nine looks like. It's three rows of three. We've done arrays before. Some people might see it this way. Three, six, nine. Some people might see it this way. Three, six, nine nine and we keep going with the conversation like that and that's how we led into these awesome dominoes that i have so we'll start going with okay how do, how do we know how many is here who, who sees the three first then the two who sees the two then the three 
and just get them that open-ended tell me what you see and how do you know and we just keep going through so five and two six and three these are the basic ones and then we chuck in this extra one here that was suddenly different hang on a second we recognize that as seven from before seven and four how do we know well i know six and four are friends of ten one more is eleven or i know seven and four is 11 or i know that seven and two and two again is 11 and just continue that way and then i keep exposing them to the other patterns on these dominoes that go higher so a similar again where we've got the six and the two we know that this is eight we know that this is four i can go eight ten twelve or i can go eight twelve and just keep going that way and this is where it's really good um, with using these dominoes to differentiate because just in this dot talk you'll see those kids that are like oh my god how many dots is that that's too overwhelming I can't handle it and you'll know which ones will work for them and you just keep going through um, to showcase what these other dominoes look like now don't worry if you don't own these dominoes I didn't even take the dominoes in this is all just in pictures and then what we do is we play domino battle so I have these games here uh, sorry, these pictures here laminated and this is the example I have of how to play the game So with your partner choose a domino for example this this person on the left here I'm going to zoom in here these partners here have picked the double six and the people on the other side here have picked the six and the two and This this is their barrier so they can't see each other there and then they really need to think about questions to ask each other where they can just put counters or a block or use a whiteboard marker to mark off the ones that we know it's not. And they do this by asking good questions. That's the point. They need to ask questions. So does your domino use friends of 10? Now, not either one of them would say no, it's not friends of 10, which means that they can block off anything that is friends of 10. I'm just trying to get my cursor up. Here we go. Uh, so, for example, I can see, uh, where is Friends of 10? I'm just trying to find it. Here we go, 6 and 4. So they would mark that one off. Uh, over here, there's 9 and 1. They would mark that one off. Okay, it's not Friends of 10, 6 and 4, mark that one off. They would be able to do that. Another question that comes up. Does your domino use only odd numbers? Uh, these guys would say no. And then they would have to cross off those other ones that only use the odd numbers. And you keep going that way. Sorry, just keep clicking. So then another question, and you need, you can role model this with the kids. Does your domino equal an even number? Does your domino have doubles? And this was hilarious when I played it with one of the groups where the students had chosen doubles and the very first question that the other group asked was, does your domino have doubles? As soon as they said yes, they knew which one it was because there's only one domino on there that uses doubles. It was great. They won in the first go. It was hilarious. And then eventually they'll get to the point where they think they know which one it is and they can say, is your domino four and six? Or is your domino six and six? Or is your domino seven and two? And, two? Uh, and they'll be able to go that way. They might even ask things like, does your domino total 12? Because you never know. It could be 12 on one side and zero on the other side. And that's how we play. And then... Uh, the idea being is that you might, oh sorry, so I'll just show you this slide here. This is where, you know, the counters are eventually blocked out at the end there and it might look like that. And then I have this funny picture that I put up saying, let the battle begin, just a Google picture that I used. Uh, so the actual resources I will just pull up. These are the domino sheets. Uh, print these off, laminate them. You just need to make sure you print off multiple copies and obviously print it in color. Uh, one way that you could make this more difficult is after they've practiced with this for a while then do it in black and white and see if they're still able to see those patterns without the colors there will be a lot of color recognition they will know that this bright orange here is 10 uh, they will know that gray is 12 eventually they'll learn that and they'll pick up on that we still want them to be able to see those so um, you could print that off in black and white later so there's six games six is the hardest one there where you can see you know 12 and 12 uh, different patterns there, chuck in a couple of random ones with a one, a two, or a five just to help them out there. And then the easier one here uh, is obviously all those numbers below, six or below. Um, and then the goal is always with my students doing your personal best. I don't care if you're not, if you're on game six or game three or whatever, my goal is, is that you are doing your own best and you get better each day. Okay, so I've gone through that pretty quickly today. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment box below. Send me a message on any of my social media. I'm on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, I'm always happy to chat and make it, meet a like-minded colleague. 
and um, if the resources don't work just send me a message as well happy to help uh, so it will be in the description box below there's a little arrow in on the side here if you are looking at this in social media open it up into YouTube click on the little box the drop down box and the link will be there along with my social media links all free for you remember I don't make money from any of this stuff sharing is caring and uh, give the video a thumbs up if you think your kids will enjoy doing this and if your kids do do this do do this <laughs> I would love to hear about it and see what their reactions are the goal remember is all of that really good dialogue and really good questioning and sharing between those ideas and being able to visualize in their mind what they say and articulate that as well because we've found that some of the hardest things for our kids to do especially our EALD learners English second language or additional language uh, the hardest thing sometimes is, is, is articulating how you got to a solution, why you got to a solution and being able to visualize someone else's strategy as well and taking that into account. So uh, I'd love to hear how that generates conversation. So for now, what I will do though, I will pop a video up the top here that's called What's My Number? It's another game that I use to help generate really good questioning and I will leave my subscription button at the bottom below. Just hover over that, click to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye.